Hello and welcome to Dimensionality Reduction. My name is Alex Keiko Geitsch. I'm a junior professor at the Group for Neural Theory at ENS in Paris, and I'm interested in how the cerebellum contributes to motor control, especially using techniques from population coding and statistical learning. Before jumping into the lectures, uh, I want to give a brief overview of the tutorials that you'll encounter today. In the first tutorial, you'll learn to conceptualize multivariate data from a geometric point of view. This is going to be very useful for understanding how principal component analysis works, which is the topic of the second tutorial. Uh, both of these are going to use toy data that is two-dimensional, and that's really going to be very useful for building your intuition. In the third tutorial, you, you will use um, PCA for dimensionality reduction in high dimensional data. And then in the final tutorial, you will learn a nonlinear dimensionality reduction technique called TSNI. But let's jump right into a geometric view of data. Multivariate means many variables. And as scientists, when we perform an experiment and make many observations, Essentially what we're doing is collecting samples of many variables um, that we're observing through the experiment. I'm gonna keep returning to the example of a neural recording. So in this case, each XI represents the firing rate of a particular neuron um, from the whole population of neurons that you're recording from. You could also imagine that each XI could represent a behavioral variable for a particular behavioral task. So at, at each time point in the experiment, you will collect a new vector corresponding to the firing rates of all of these neurons. And how do you uh, represent all of this data? One way is to just stack all of the vectors together into the data matrix X. In this matrix, each row corresponds to a single sample of all of the variables. So all of the firing rates of all neurons at a single time point. And each column corresponds to all of the samples of a single variable. So X3 would be uh, the firing rates for neuron three at all time points in your experiment. Another way to represent this data is as a point in a high dimensional vector space. Uh, this can be described by the coordinate axes, each of which represents the firing rates for a different neuron. I'm going to focus on the two dimensional case for the sake of visualization. When you collect multiple samples um, from your experiment, then you will get multiple data points which will lie on different locations uh, in this uh, vector space. And that's because there is typically a lot of variability in neural data. But there's different flavors of variability. And one possibility is you may see data that looks like this. So this is an example of uncorrelated data where the variability of neuron one is pretty much the same as the variability of neuron two. Uh, on the other hand, you might see uncorrelated data where one neuron has much higher variability than the other neuron. So in this case, you can see that the, um, the direction of most of the variance of the data is along the axis corresponding to neuron one. On the other hand, you might see that your data is very correlated. And in this case, notice that the direction corresponding to most of the variance in the data is aligned neither with neuron one's coordinate axis nor with the axis of neuron two. Essentially, the goal of PCA is to find this direction. So to give you the really big picture view of the message for today, um, typically in neural data, even when we're recording from very large numbers of neurons, we don't observe that the neural activity patterns uh, are uniformly distributed across the entire um, vector space of possible activity patterns. Usually we see that they are constrained to lie on a lower dimensional subspace. Um, and the goal of PCA is to find this low dimensional subspace by looking for directions of maximum variance in the data. But before we can uh, understand how this really works, we'll uh, work on developing our intuition for a geometric view of data.